Okay, back on the Zenith Farm Radio from 1939, and I'd like to take a moment to uh, demonstrate something that applies to all radio tubes, or should I say radio tubes that have a top cap on them like this one did. Many radio tubes have a grid cap, and you can see this is the connection that comes from the radio that connects to the grid cap on the tube. Well, after many decades, the glue that holds the tube grid cap in place becomes ineffective, and whenever you attempt to remove the connection from the radio from the tube, the, the whole cap just breaks off the tube. Uh, sometimes you can minimize that effect by spraying a little contact cleaner around the connector and that will make it easier to remove, but in some cases, no matter how careful you are, the top cap is going to break off of the tube. Well, don't fear, you know, don't go ordering any tube because there's a good chance that this can be saved and put back together and work just as good as it ever did. And I'll demonstrate how I go about doing that right now. First, you need to prepare the tube cap to be remounted to the vacuum tube. And as you can see, I have it mounted in a pair of vice grip pliers. Don't squeeze too tight or you might destroy the tube cap. And then you'll need to heat up this solder here. And yeah, my soldering iron tip looks kind of rough, doesn't it? You need to heat up this solder and use either a solder vacuum pump or desoldering braid to remove the molten solder and that will leave a through hole for the lead protruding through the top of the tube to be inserted through. Okay, as you can see we now have a through hole through the top of the tube cap so that will allow the lead coming up from the top of the tube to be reinserted and soldered. Next we will prepare the lead coming out of the tube for soldering and to do that we'll take a fine grade of sandpaper and sand this down a little bit. Also I can tell you that this lead is not long enough to uh, protrude through the hole on the top of the tube cap so we will have to solder a short piece of wire onto this. And I now have the tube secured in a pair of vice grips, very gently, as not to damage the pins. And for an extension lead, I'll use a few strands of regular hookup wire twisted together, and I will tin those strands. And then I will attach them to this remaining little stub here and solder it in place. Okay, and there's the wire soldered onto the tube. And I actually found something that's a little bit easier to deal with than stranded hookup wire. Just an old component lead cut off of an old capacitor. And now I want to get all this crusty, dried up glue and junk out of the tube cap. So that's just going to take a little trial and error patience scraping that out. Okay, now comes the uh, part where we uh, glue the cap to the tube because we have to rely on more than just the soldering of the wire to hold it in place. We've got a couple of options here. I can either use standard white Elmer's glue or I can use this uh, super glue. Now, years ago I read a warning about gluing loose tube bases back onto a tube and the warning stated that super glue can sometimes cause the glass to crack due to the tube heating and cooling or something like that. I don't fully understand it. But these battery tubes like what's in this radio, they don't get hot at all. So in this case, I think we'll be safe using super glue. If you're gluing the cap back on a tube or gluing a base back on a tube, that gets fairly hot, you might want to play it safe and stick with Elmer's. So I will apply a little bit of super glue around here, place the cap in place, let it dry, and then we will solder the lead onto the cap. Okay, here we are. 
Just waiting for the glue to dry and then we will solder this wire in place, cut off the excess lead and it will be done. Okay, here we go. Tube cap soldered back on, re-glued, and this tube is ready to be put back into service. So now if you encounter a tube with its top cap busted off, you know how to fix it. And as you can hear, the results of my repair were successful. Now the next issue I would like to address is this battery cable and I realize I could probably salvage this cable if I would cut off the wires here at the plug and re-strip and re-solder but there's some places that are starting to get hard and they crackle whenever the wire is flexed so I'd feel a lot better about replacing it with modern color-coded wire I remember whenever I was a young teenager, I bought a Philco battery radio from someone, and at some point in the set's life, the wires had broken loose from the plug, and apparently whoever wired it, wired it wrong and applied 90 volts to where the 1.5 volt filament supply was to go, and it burned out all the tube filaments. So I would feel a lot better by just replacing this old cable with color-coded wire, and then I will make a note of which color corresponds to what terminal in case it breaks in the hands of someone else who might possibly own this radio after me. They'll know what to do with it and which terminal the wire goes to. So we'll take care of that now. And it just so happens that I have this cable that I cut out of a television set that I junked. This was the cable that connected to the deflection yoke. It's contains four wires nice and bundled together and this is perfect for a battery cable so all I have to do is cut off this plug and strip and tan the lead, solder them to their appropriate spot and we'll be good to go okay we have our new battery cable made up looks a lot prettier than the one that came off of it So, there's light at the end of the tunnel here. We're getting, we're getting close. Okay, back on the Zenith 39 farm radio. Went to the parts house this morning to buy some 2.2 mega ohm resistors. Well, they were out of 2.2 mega ohm resistors. Probably due to the fact that they never reordered them from the ones that I bought there from six months ago. That seems to be the thing about our local electronics parts house. Uh, once a lot of those older parts are gone that nobody's buying anymore, they don't reorder them. It's really sad because whenever I first started fooling with TVs and radios back in the early 90s, I was going down there several times a week to buy stuff. And now if I go once a month, I'm, I'm doing good. And I was talking to the owner of this parts house before he passed away, and he told me that back in the heyday that radio and TV repair people were his bread and butter. He said, now if I have to depend on radio and TV repair people to, to stay in business, I'd go broke. But anyway, I couldn't find 2.2 meg ohm resistors, but I was able to get 2 meg resistors, which should be close enough. And this one package here, you can tell, has been on the shelf a while. These are Sylvania ECG branded resistors. And you can see on the back, they are marked GTE Sylvania. So those have been around for at least 30 years. But yeah, it's a shame that I'm finding myself having to order more and more parts now because about the only need I have for going to the local parts house is to pick up solder, desoldering braid, heat shrink tubing, stuff such as that because the old stuff like capacitors and resistors it's getting so they don't have any more. When they run out, that's it. Okay, you can just barely hear it, but we have this radio connected to about 20 feet of wire running out of my 
shop window and I'm in Mississippi and we're just barely picking up WWL 870 out of New Orleans so that's not bad for 2.30 in the afternoon. And this resistor here, R6, is in the plate circuit of the first audio tube. It's a one meg resistor, but the original resistor had increased to over six meg ohms, which, of course, would starve the uh, first audio tube of plate voltage, which means poor performance. But yeah, putting the right value resistor in there really helps things. The volume is louder. And besides the busted speaker, the audio is not as distorted. Now that we have all the resistors replaced, we need to deal with this piece of wire here. This is the B plus input to the IF transformer. And I suspect some critter chewed on this. This was right in the area where I found one of the dirt dauber nests. So I think rather than tear the whole IF transformer apart just for one wire, I'm just going to slide some heat shrink tubing down over this and call it good. Now if, now if all the wires leading up into the IF transformer were chewed, I would have no choice but to pull the transformer and completely, completely rewire it. But this way we can just slide a piece of heat shrink tubing over it and be done with it. Okay, that wire is now repaired, and that song is playing in the background. What's this make about the fifth or sixth video that I've done of a radio where this station was playing that song? This goes to show that song is obviously in heavy rotation. But you think they could broaden their playlist a little bit. I mean, out of all the great songs that were recorded over the past 50 or 60 years, it seems radio stations want to pick and choose a uh, hundred or two songs to play over and over again, and I just simply don't get it. Okay, I think we're to the point where uh, we can restring the dial now, and in order to do that, I'll have to slide this pointer out off and remove the dial by removing these two screws here. Here we go with the dial and pointer removed and what's left of the dial string. Yeah, see another little bit of a dirt dauber nest back there on the rear of the tuning capacitor pulley. So I want to clean that off and apply a little couple of drops of oil to each end of the tuning capacitor to get the bearings lubricated so this will move as freely as possible. Okay, we now have the dial restrung. It wasn't too bad. Every black person in America, I don't know. Perhaps loved by the sewer plant. Let me read my horoscope, Aries. Some things come easy to you, but other things. You do. WSM. Okay, now about the only other thing left that I want to do is perform an RF and IF alignment with the signal generator just to touch things up and make sure this radio is as sensitive as it can be. But I think I'm going to do that in the next video since we have more time. Okay, there you go. Hope you enjoyed it and more to come later.